In this video, we'll be talking about the bones of the nasal cavity. And the two major structures to, to point out in the nasal cavity are the nasal septum, or the nasal wall, and the nasal conchi, also known as turbinates. And to discuss the structure of the nasal cavity, we'll be talking about the ethmoid bone, which we talked about in a previous video, the vomer, inferior nasal conchi, and in addition, we'll talk about the lacrimal bone because we'll see it has a functional relationship to the nasal cavity, although it does not structurally contribute to the nasal cavity. So now let's first consider the nasal septum. This is a sagittal section through the skull, and it's practically down the midline, except that it's slightly off to the side so that we can see the nasal septum. So if we take a closer look at the nasal septum, we'll, we should note first that a good portion of the nasal septum is composed of cartilage. So there is a piece of cartilage that works with the other bones to give us the complete separation of the two nasal cavities. If we remove the cartilage from consideration, because technically it's not part of the skull, we then have two bones that are going to form our nasal septum. The first bone we talked about in a previous video is the ethmoid bone. And if we look at the ethmoid bone using this figure, we can note again that a part of the ethmoid bone is the perpendicular plate. And it's the perpendicular plate that's going to contribute to the nasal septum. The other bone that's going to contribute to the nasal septum is called the vomer. This bone is an unpaired bone, like the ethmoid, and practically all it's doing is contributing to the lower part of the nasal septum. Now, there's not much to say about the vomer, except I like to talk about why it's called the vomer. To talk about why it's called the vomer, I'd like to show you this figure. This is a figure of an 19th century plow. And what I want to show you is the shape of the plowshare, which is the part of the plow that's going to dig into and turn over the earth. Notice its shape. Well, guess what the word vomer means? The word vomer in Latin means plowshare. So apparently the anatomists called this bone the vomer because of its resemblance to a plowshare. Now, if you're not convinced by this, I'd like to show you the vomer in isolation in this disarticulated skull. So here's our disarticulated skull. If we isolate the vomer, so here's the vomer isolated, and we flip it around and turn it around, notice its shape, and notice how uncannily it resembles the shape of the plowshare we just looked at. So I think you'll agree that it's a well-deserved name. Occasionally, the anatomist gets it pretty right in calling certain bones by what they resemble. So the nasal septum, which we see illustrated here, is composed of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the vomer. Now let's consider what we find on the lateral walls of the nasal cavity. Projecting from the lateral walls, we see these curving bones. These bones are referred to as the nasal conchi. We can divide them into the inferior nasal conchi and the middle nasal conchi. Those are the two pairs that we can see from this view. Additionally, there are superior nasal conchi, which we can't see from this perspective. Now, why are these bones called conchi? Well, if we consider the Latin meaning of this word, well, first of all, the Latin word for a single bone would be conca. Conchi is simply the plural. And this should be familiar to you because it's a Spanish word, if you speak Spanish, concha. And the Spanish word concha is equal to the English word shell. So this bone is named after something it resembles. It resembles a shell. And there is a specific type of shell that in English we call a conch. 
And what does a conch look like? Well, here's a picture of a conch. Notice uh, the shape. Notice how the shell curves. Well, you see here again, the anatomist's name for this bone is very fortuitous because it certainly seems to resemble a shell or a conch. Now let's look at this sagittal view to view all three nasal conchi. We can now see here the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, and the inferior nasal concha. The superior and middle nasal conchi are part of the ethmoid bone, and the inferior nasal concha is an independent bone. It's one of the 14 facial bones, and it is paired, of course. These bones are going to create passageways, or canals, if you will, which are referred to as meatuses. The word meatus simply means canal, and we, we'll see that, for example, in the ex external auditory meatus. And uh, the air is going to flow through these narrow passageways, and as it does so, it's going to be thrown into turbulence. It's going to be thrown into eddies that is going to cause the air to swirl and to come into close contact with the lining of the nasal cavity. And for this reason, these bony shells are also referred to as turbinates. So here we have a close-up of the orbit again, the orbit of the skull. And now we'll talk about the lacrimal bone. And again, the lacrimal bone is not technically part of the nasal cavity, but we'll see it has an important functional and clinical relationship to the nasal cavity. Now, what does the word lacrimal come from? Again, if you speak Spanish, you're at an advantage because there is a word in Spanish, lacrima, which means tear. And lacrimal refers to tears. So why is the lacrimal bone called the lacrimal bone or the tear bone? If we take a look at it from the side, as we can from this photo, you can see here the lacrimal bone is highlighted and it is surrounded by the frontal bone, the nasal bone, the maxilla, and the ethmoid. And one of the important features that the lacrimal bone has is a fossa, which is a fossa that's going to accommodate the lacrimal sac. Now let's take another look at the same bone using this figure from Gray's Anatomy. It's a very nice figure. And if we zoom in, we can see again the, the lacrimal bone. And here is the lacrimal fossa. And notice that it's not only the lacrimal bone that contributes to the lacrimal fossa. Actually, uh, part of the frontal process of the maxilla also contributes to the lacrimal fossa. And again, the lacrimal fossa is going to accommodate the, the lacrimal sac. So now what, what is this lacrimal sac doing? Well, here's a nice picture that shows the tear system. In other words, the system that produces and drains tears that are going to keep the exterior of the eye lubricated. Up here in this figure, we have our lacrimal gland. And you might remember that in the frontal bone, there is a lacrimal fossa which accommodates the lacrimal gland. What the lacrimal gland is doing is producing tears that are constantly going onto the surface of the eyeball, keeping it moist, the conjunctiva that is, and keeping it moist. And these tears need to drain. And they drain as, as is indicated by the arrows. And there is a drainage system that picks up these tears. And these tears then flow into a collecting sac, which is called the lacrimal sac. And the lacrimal sac is accommodated by the lacrimal fossa. The lacrimal sac is then connected to the nasolacrimal duct, which is then going to cause the tears to drop down and empty into the nasal cavity right underneath the inferior nasal concha. And you become aware of this when you cry. You're producing tears all the time, and you don't notice it, though, because the tears are constantly draining by the system and going into the nasal cavity. And when you cry, what happens is that the drainage system is overwhelmed and the tears overflow and run down your face. But a good portion of your tears also drains, by way of this drainage system, into the nasal cavity.
And this is why when you have a good cry, you're not only going to wipe the tears from your eyes, but you're going to blow your nose because the tears are going into your nasal cavity and dripping from your nose. So next time you have a good cry, like for example, after an anatomy exam, tears of joy, of course, not tears of sadness, uh, keep this in mind. So this concludes the video. Again, if you'd like to take a quiz, there is a link to a quiz in the description below. And here are the image attributions. And finally, here is Apollo again, trying to be useful. I guess he thinks I don't shampoo enough and he's trying to clean my hair.